All I can say is one of the few wines in the last couple years that brought tears to my eyes. Just an outstanding... Oh, thank you. I'm Matthew Horky. For the last seven years, I've traveled around the world tasting thousands of wines annually in search of the most unique, exciting, and expensive bottles on the planet. I love Chianti Classico. So Chianti Classico is one of the spiritual homes of San Giovese, along with the Appalachians Brunello di Montalcino and Vino Nobile di Montepulciano. And if you watch the channel, you know already how much I love San Giovese. It was my first love when it came to Italian wines, European wines, and even fine wines in general. There are three levels of Chianti Classico. First, you're going to see the Annata, which everybody makes. Annata just means the year, the vintage. Next step up, you'll get to Reserva. These wines have to be aged for a little bit longer. And then finally, Gran Selezione, which need to be aged and made from a selection of grapes. Chianti Classico is working on a UGA system, which is naming wines by village, but that'll be out in a few years. Chianti Classico should not be confused with Chianti. Chianti is a bigger region in Tuscany, and Chianti Classico can only be made in the center of Chianti. To know you're getting a Chianti Classico, look for this black rooster symbol either on the front or the back of a bottle. A lot of people don't realize that Chianti Classico is quite high. You see pine trees, it's almost quasi-alpine. I mean, some of the vineyards go up to 600, 700 meters. Another reason I love Chianti Classico so much is the ultimate wine for tomato base. This is pizza, pie. Pasta, it works wonders. The tanginess of Sangiovese just goes perfect with any tomato based dish. For me, Chianti Classico is one of the best fine wine regions in the world in terms of price quality. I'm here in Tuscany, in the heart of Chianti Classico, so I thought I'd try a different type of video. I'm hunting down some of the best Chianti Classicos to recommend to you. So with over 300 bottlers, I can't include everybody on the list, but these are Chianti Classicos that I think you should check out in 2022. So first on the list is the Fontodi Chianti Classico 2019. Yes, I know it's not a Reserva, not a Gran Selezione. I think this is a fabulous wine. It's widely available, 100% Sangiovese. Uh, Giovanni Minetti says he treats this like a Reserva, and the 2019 is brilliant. 100% Sangiovese. You know, actually, you know, some of their top, more famous wines, Vigno del Sorbo, uh, Flaccianello, are some of my favorite wines in Tuscany. But I have to say, the Chianti Classico, everybody can afford this wine. It's absolutely delicious. You want raspberry, you want earth, you want sour cherry, pepper. It's got enough fruit, but some grippy tannins on the back end. Kind of like massage your palate. Heck of a lot of value for money. Okay, next up on the list is the Badia Coltobono Chianti Classico Anata 2020. I've been buying this wine for a long time, actually, really enjoying it. The state is beautiful, it's an old monastery. To me, it's what Sangiovese should be. Juicy, red fruit, savory, a little bit of white pepper. Everything I want in Sangiovese. Medium bodied red berry, a little bit of tangerine peel, some chewy tannins. Plenty of acidity. Just, it's just a wine that makes you want to eat. Of course, I like the reserves from the property, but this is a wine. I think it delivers a heck of a lot of value for money. Next on the list, I have the Castello Vinco Maggio Chianti Classico 2020. Look, I like the reserves and the Gran Selezioni's a lot, but I'm really impressed uh, at this kind of price point, what kind of wine you're getting. For those that like the bigger, kind of more riper style, but you still have tannin. Got some floral components. It's round, plush, a lot of sour, cherry, black cherry type of flavors. Completely round on the palate with a little bit of tannin. Minimal oak, you get very minimal oak flavors. It's the kind of style that a lot of people are gonna be enjoying, but there's enough tannin, enough structure for connoisseurs to enjoy it well. A lot of wine for this kind of price. Next on the list, we have the Chiliano di Sopra Chianti Classico 2020. The Vigneron Maddalena. Really, really small production, really hands-on, no technology. Really trying to make, you know, a Burgundy-style Chianti Classico, you know, Burgundy hands-on-ness, but still it tastes like Chianti Classico. It's a wine that's to me, is super exciting. It was also mentioned by Eric Asimov in the New York Times. What I love about this wine is it's, it's got it's got enough concentration and body, but it's still more red fruit driven as opposed to dark fruit. It still has the beautiful acidity of Sangiovese and the tannins are super fine grained. Right now the estate only makes one Chianti Classico, so all the best grapes are gonna go into it. 100% Sangiovese, 100% delicious, tons of texture, producer to keep your eye on, especially if you like stripped down minimal intervention wines that are super clean. Beautiful stuff. <laughs> Next up on the list is the Isne uh, Vigna. Casanova de Laia. 
It, you know, I like to put a lot of wines here that you can actually get, but this is a single vineyard wine. It's gonna be a little bit more difficult to get. This is the type of wine when you when people say that it's easy to confuse Nebbiolo with Sangiovese that I think this is really the case here. Wine is super floral, like, you know, raspberry, cranberry, sour cherry type flavors. But the, the rose petal really jumps out in the wine. Really silky on the palate, but the tannins are super, super grippy. Wine that I really like, it's gonna go well with food, it's gonna age really well. Might be a little bit more difficult to track down, but I think it's something worth checking out. Next up is a wine that completely surprised me, Tenuta Daily Day. This is their Forcole Chianti Classico 2019. This is in Panzano, the same village as the famous Fontodi. I actually judged with one of the employees at the Vermentino competition last week, and when she dropped wines off for me, I wasn't expecting much. This wine delivers a lot of value for money. Here in Tuscany's 15 euros, you've got the Panzano style. You got sour cherry, black cherry, yeah, pepper even. It's a little bit of a dense or Chianti Classico. On the palate, there's just plenty of texture and these tannins, they're just like really fine grain. For me, I think this is a wine that punches way above its price point. I'm super surprised and once again it proves why Chianti Classico is one of the ultimate value for money wine regions. The next one I have on the list is the Calcinaia Chianti Classico Reserva 2018. A state with a lot of history. This is actually my style of Chianti Classico. Just a little bit more tannins, more medium bodied, a little more savory. It's a super clean wine. Also 100% Sangiovese, so you know I'm gonna be a huge, huge, huge fan. <laughs> you just could get sour cherry earth, a little bit of white pepper. For me, what separates the, these wines from a lot of Chianti Classicos is the tannin. These wines do not shy away from tannin. They're chewy, gonna be fantastic with food. And I don't have a huge history of these wines, but they should, I think they should age really, really darn well. So next on the list is the Carpasa 2019 Adocio Amateo. It's a Chianti Classico Reserva. All I could say is one of the few wines that brought tears to my eyes in the last few years. Just outstanding stuff. Follows a, a, a true vigneron. Really small producers, they don't come around like this so often. You want red raspberry, you want sour cherry, pepper, earth type notes. Wines that are round, have plenty of texture, but still grippy tannins. Tasted some older vintages, the wines age perfectly, they hold together really nice. That's not a cheap wine, but something that you wanna seek out if you wanna get the taste of real Chianti Classico. Next up is a brand new producer that I never even knew about because their first vintage was only a few years ago. Casa Nuova. This is the Chianti Classico Reserva 2018. Brand new estate, beautiful estate. Obviously there's a lot of money put in, but surprisingly the wines are not as made. Now, they're not as technical as I expected. Just real classic Sangiovese flavors. You're gonna have some sour cherry, some black cherry, maybe some red plum a little bit of like balsamic vinaigrette, so to speak, earth. Really actually quite complex, quite t traditional tasting. I think Chianti Classico Reservas offer tremendous value because they're complex, they're easy to drink now, and they're pretty age-worthy. Next up we have the Volpaia Chianti Classico Reserva 2019. 2015 was actually in Wine Spectator's top 10 wines of the year a few years ago. Volpaia is a really unique estate. It's in the village of Volpaia. The winery takes up like two thirds of the entire village. Really historical, really cool. I've liked these wines in the past. 2019 was a great vintage in Tuscany. You get a lot of rose petal, a lot of sour cherry. Stuff that I love, very like clean, but not too, you know, technical or modern style. This is just a pretty, elegant, well-made wine. That's the, that's the best way to put it. Next up on the list, we have the Castello de Ama San Lorenzo Chianti Classico Gran Selezione 2017. This is a producer that I've enjoyed for a long time, especially their, their regular Chianti Classico, which is a beautiful wine. But if you want to step up, you want to get serious, have a Gran Selezione, I think this is the bottle to choose. If you ever get a chance to visit this estate, it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, in the Hamlet of Ama, they have a restaurant, some accommodation, just a, kind of a magical place, a place that I want to come back to by myself on holiday. For me, it's a darker expression of Sangiovese. If you know, if you watch the channel, you know I like more sour cherry, but it just seems to work here. You know, get a lot of black cherry, mocha, kind of red plum, sweet cedar type of flavor. It's so layered on the palate. And the staying power, length, and the tannins are really, really nice. 
Next up on my list is the Fattoria della Aiola. This is the Cancello Rosso Chianti Classico Gran Selezione 2017. I really like this wine because you can buy a Gran Selezione at the same price as a lot of Chianti Classico Reservas. What stands out in this wine is the leather, the sweet cedar, the white cherry, the earthy notes that accompany the sour cherry flavors that I absolutely love. It's full-bodied wine, but it's not an absolute monster. It still has the delicate flavors of Sangiovese. This producer is really nice because I think the Reserva offers tremendous value for money, but if you want to jump into the Gran Selezione category and you don't want to break the bank, this is a great way to jump in. So which wines did I miss? Do you guys have any favorite Chianti Classical producers? I'd like to know in the comments below. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you soon.